actually wrote this for a class I just took in Native American Studies as my first exam, which was supposed to be an essay, but the teachers really coolly let me do a slam poem instead. So, yeah, right? Uh, it's from the perspective of culture as a mother figure to indigenous populations of the Pacific North, which are highly dependent on salmon. And uh, specifics used in the poem are from the Inuit tribe because all the specifics are for one tribe, so I can't say one story, have it be universal to all of them. Since Sedna's severed finger became the first salmon, I had never hungered. I bound the wind to my back and we carried each other out of myth into history where my sons learned to rise on their own. They learned to move with the earth to take her by the hand and dance until her icy protestations became the soft good night of a full stomach, and my children sang her lullabies to the rhythm of the river. Always have they been this way, so in love with the sound of the sky reflected in the salmon's eyes, they paint every word they speak that same color. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness was not an 18th century invention. 10,000 years ago, we called it Ikalubura, salmon. The arrival of science was the first time they ever had a reason to dissect it, to separate sight from stomach as if birth and reproduction were not two poles of the same sphere that you call life. Its greatest value was how many toddlers would smile when the catch came in, and then suddenly there was never enough of it to stuff pocketbooks, leaving bellies to crave better days until their palms, upturned and empty, forgot that better days ever existed, as if sockeye kept their collective memory hidden in hooked faces. They hardly talked to me. Instead, their voices are wasted on the wasteland this land is becoming, still wilderness, but poisoned by the necessity of articulating their identity more specifically than simply salmon people, as if they were being taught to live in the dark, rigid alleys of an ideological slum and their traditions were food stamps, never enough to go around. Toxicity is not a word I taught them, Neither did they discover life cycle, but if you want to call it that, theirs is sustained by the circular pattern of an ecosystem's persistence and stops when its existence is held hostage at the whim of somebody's wallet. The earth no longer listens to their soft-souled feet upon her spine, but instead subjects herself to drills and dynamite. And my soft-souled children are no longer strong, as if they had never mastered their own territory, and I can tell they are hungry to bend rivers again and fill their nets with the thought of me. But when the checkbook tells them their value in dollars, they accept it. As if acreage could confine the spirit to the shape of foreign regulation and a lack of permits to exercise their own heritage, they hardly listen to me. I try to tell them to knit kibiot for the invaders' souls. Their hearts are too cold for anything to grow. I try to tell them that the land still has ears, but nobody hears or nobody listens. And slowly, like ice melting at one degree Celsius, my voice gets lost in the sound of a very brave new world as I watch the sand and ground. And every time they kiss me goodnight, I wonder if this tucking of their eyes into the night will be the last time we say goodbye. <laughs>